Hey YouTube, Drone Tech here. We're a few days out now from the amazing revolution that Jesse Smollett hoaxed and lied about a hate crime committed against him by Trump supporters. This is a big problem for Hollywood stars and media personalities who easily fell for this concocted story that played to all their biases and stereotypes. I keep seeing people in the media asking, you know, why would he do this? And it's the answer is pretty obvious. It's because people in the media are very biased and their biases uh, are easily exploited. They've gotten to the point of a sort of religious dedication to their ideology, and it's easy just to make up a story like this and know that they're going to fall for it every time. We've seen it happen again and again and again. Now the media is in full damage control mode, and it would be hilarious if it wasn't so damn infuriating. From inside, how do you think the media, you know, the media had to, had to cover this, um, and it had to cover this, you know, cautiously and responsibly. How do you think, on the whole, uh, the media has has done as, uh, as a job? Strong, high-quality news organizations have tried to be very careful all along on this story. Part of this damage control appears to be rewriting history, with many of these so-called news organizations claiming that they had no part in spreading the story at all. CNN's so-called media expert, Brian Stelter, laughingly claimed that strong, high-quality news, news organizations like CNN were careful with the story. Was Don Lemon being careful when he told Red Table Talk that it was because of Smollett's skin color and his sexual preference that people were going to be skeptical of the story? No, it had nothing to do with all the inconsistencies and just the absurdity of the claims. No, it was his skin color and his sexual preference. Was April Ryan being careful when she declared, quote, the attack on Smollett is a hate crime and should be treated as such? She's supposedly a journalist. Do journalists make such hardline declarations about things they don't have all the facts on? Or how about Brooke Baldwin, who arrogantly smeared the entire country saying, this is America in 2019. Of course, that's actually been scrubbed from the CNN transcripts. I went looking for it, and they have a partial quote, but they actually took out, this is America in 2019. Scrubbing transcripts is certainly the behavior of a high-quality news organization. Speaking of SC Cup, what happened to her? She used to be a fairly reasonable person. Now she's on Twitter telling Trump supporters how disgusted she is by them. Yeah, really. The giddiness among Trump supporters over the Smollett news is gross. This story is awful. He allegedly abused resources, exploited raw divisions in this country, and made it harder for every victim of a hate crime to report. Funny, because I always thought CNN and the media exploited raw divisions in this country. There was a lot of a, a rush to judgment. I mean, I think in a lot of these From speculative, I, I think in a lot of these sort of speculative controversies where the media is necessarily reporting on a story really, really early when we don't know much, um, folks have to go with what they suppose and what we knew at the time was the president's supporters are racist. Of course, there's a, a desire almost, a credulousness about a story like this where we're not sufficiently skeptical when we're confronted with facts that don't really seem to fit up, fit together too well. Right. I mean, the, the MAGA uh, quote, I remember reading about this story and looking yeah. for a real uh, reputable media outlet reporting on that, and I could not find one, right? Wrong. Right. Wrong. MSNBC was among the first news organizations to immediately report that the alleged attackers wore MAGA hats. They are looking for two suspects who were apparently wearing Make America Great Again hats. And you also had CNN contributor Keith Boykin tweeting out the MAGA country claims. Besides that, you had other outlets like Slate, Vanity Fair, and Vibe Magazine all tweeting out the same fictional MAGA country claims. The last thing I want to show you is how Brian Stelter and this lying Vox propagandist work off each other to sort of wiggle out of responsibility for promoting this story. And this is where the revisionist history really comes into play. The people who were rep repeating that quote were not news outlets, were not media outlets. It was repeated by, sure, people who maybe had good intentions of wanting to spread this story and had empathy for what they thought was, you know, a real story. But we can't confuse celebrity tweets <laughs> with the media and the press. And, you know... So you're saying actors and activists yes. who were rushing to his side yes. because they're friends with him and they yeah. support him and they're concerned about a possible hate of crime course, he's in the are hospital. not the same right? as Chicago yeah. reporters who were trying to find out what happened. Exactly. And, and it is different. They claim it was just actors and activists who were promoting the story and the MAGA claims, and that the media never actually had a chance to vet the story. This is, of course, absurd. ABC News interviewed him, had a chance to ask him any question they wanted, and they didn't ask a single probing question. They just went along with every claim that he made and gave him a platform to continue perpetuating this hoax.
The media let themselves be used for the purposes of attacking their political opposition, Trump supporters. It's just another layer of subterfuge that's been exposed and another reason for people to distrust the media. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you like my content, please support me on Patreon or PayPal. You can find the link in the description and in the pinned post. Thanks.